How exactly is Volkswagen's 1.5 liter turbo engine put together? Let's break it down step by step. Today, we're walking through the full assembly process of the latest 1.5 T engine from Volkswagen. There's a lot that goes into this, so if you're into engines and builds like this, don't forget to hit that like button. This is the DQ200 transmission shipped straight from the transmission plant. First, we pull up the prep checklist, stop the cart and drop the list on it. Then we lift the transmission and set it into a bin. Each cart carries two transmissions, so we repeat the process with another one. Now, here's the 1.5 liter turbo engine from Volkswagen. Just like with the transmission, we lift the engine and place it in a bin on the cart. Each cart holds two engines, total. For we double check the checklist to make sure everything's in the right order and then send the cart down the line. That cart's now fully loaded with two engines and two transmissions. Not exactly a glam shot, but it gets the job done. From here it rolls over to the assembly line. We adjust the support points on the pallet, use a wireless controller to move the hoist into place, hook it up, and lift the engine onto the pallet. Don't be fooled. There are only three pins supporting it, but the engine's heavy enough that it stays stable through the whole process. We scan the fist sheet and place it on the pallet. Then, we grab the transmission and bolt it to the flywheel side of the engine using a bolt in the upper right corner. That bolt gets torqued with a power wrench that's preset for the right torque. Next up is the alternator. Two bolts are hand-threaded first, then torqued down. After that, we bolt the transmission to the CV axle mount using two bolts and tighten them with a robot mount electronic wrench. Those two bolts start linking the transmission to the engine. Later, three more will get added from underneath to lock it all in place. The starter motor goes right on top of the transmission. Two screws are hand-threaded, then tightened using the electronic wrench. Here's a question. Why are the bolts here so long? Any guesses what that's for? We scan the fist sheet again, then scan the QR code on the transmission, toss the scanned label, and clean up the alternator harness by clipping it to the engine. We thread a metal sleeve into one of the bolt holes and mount the AC compressor using three bolts torqued with a power wrench. Then we torque the two bolts on the alternator. At the engine transmission junction, we add two more bolts and tighten them. A specialized torque wrench, set to 59 pound-feet, is used to tighten three specific bolts. Each of those bolts gives a click once it hits the right torque. Then we hit the auto-tightening station. Robots first torque the alternator bolts, then the compressor bolts. It's super efficient, but it also means fewer people are needed on the line. So what's better? Robots or skilled hands? By the way, that compressor is what keeps your car cool on a hot day. That sweet AC breeze? It's all thanks to this guy. Next, we plug in the alternator harness, tidy up the wires, Snap on a cover plate and lock it in place with two bolts, using a power wrench. A large bracket goes over the transmission. We bolt it down with three hand thread bolts then attach the full engine and transmission setup to the chassis pad. The starter harness is added and secured with a nut on a threaded post using the electronic wrench. Then we snap on the decorative engine cover. Now we torque down the three bolts on the upper bracket using the power wrench. This bracket will eventually bolt to the vehicle body. 
two connectors get plugged into the compressor. The belt tensioner goes on the engine held in place by two bolts. First they're torqued with a power wrench, then finished off with the electronic wrench. Quick question, do you replace the tensioner when you change your belt? Once the belt is in, we pull out the tensioner's small support tab. Over at another robot station, a robot tightens three bolts on the transmission bracket. We stick the fist sheet to the compressor, rotate the engine, drop the hoist back in, hook it up, lift the engine, and move it to the next stage. The pallet lowers and rolls back to the start for the next build. Now we lift the front subframe and place it on an AGV cart. The engine goes on top of that, and it's critical to get it aligned just right with the support points. Once the hoist is unhooked, we scan the fish sheet then install a speed limiter bracket right above the transmission control module. Two bolts go in, torqued down with a power wrench. The cart moves forward. We plug in the limiter to the secondary pump, then mount the pump to the engine with a special tool. All the limiters are clipped into that bracket. Then we pop off the dust cap and connect a vacuum hose. Coolant lines go on next. One side connects to the intercooler, the other to the water pipe joint, held in place with spring clips. Two bolts on the pump are torqued with the electronic wrench. To make fitting smoother, we spray some diluted glycol on the water pipe ends. Then we clamp one end of a big coolant pipe to the pump and the other to the intercooler. These are the thickest hoses in the system. We pull the dust caps from the water pump and install two more hose assemblies the same way. Then, a smaller coolant hose goes up top and connects to a fitting under the inner cooler. Once all hoses are locked in, the main wiring harness gets laid over the transmission. Then we tighten the last two hoses to the pump and hook up one final small hose at the top. Now the fuel line gets installed. Next up, the CV axle. Six bolts go in and are torqued down using a power wrench. These axles mount directly to the transmission. We remove dust, boots, and caps on both ends, drop the axle into a jig, and tighten the bolts in a crisscross pattern using the electronic wrench. That evens out the load and ensures correct torque. The axles rotated a few times to check fitment, and each bolt is clicked for confirmation. No chance of over-tightening.
Then, we lift the front suspension, pull the ball joint dust cap, and slide the axle into the center of the brake disc. Suspension drops down, three bolts go through the lower control arm and the ball joint is locked in. Now we add a big center bolt, a ball joint nut on the brake disc hub and a stabilizer bar nut. Same process happens on the other side. We scan the fist sheet again, then the QR codes on the left and right suspension, and finally the subframe. With both suspensions installed, the unit moves into the 5 Grace Tightening Station. The big center bolt is torqued to 148 pound-feet plus a 180-degree turn. Lower control arm bolts are torqued to 336 pound-feet plus 50 degrees. Ball joint nuts get set to 15 pound-feet plus 90 degrees. After all that, the machine backs out, and the engine assembly rolls to the next stage. We remove dust caps from the brake calipers, bolt on the brake lines and repeat for the opposite side. A small bracket is installed on the left suspension to hold the axle shield. Two bolts go in. A spring clip secures the brake line to that bracket, tapped in with a rubber mallet. Everything's torqued with the electronic wrench, including the bracket on the right brake. Then it's time for the emissions gear, catalytic converter and particulate filter. We pull the dust cap from the turbocharger, fit the sealing ring and clamp, then bolt the whole thing into place. One bolt is hand threaded from the rear, another goes in from the inside with a small power wrench, and two more come in from the side. A final bolt is added near the filter and torqued with the electronic wrench. One more bolt is finished off with a power wrench. All torque values from the electronic wrench show up on a monitor. If it's green, you're good to go. And that's it. The full engine assembly. Complete. From here it gets lifted up, separated from the cart and sent to the second floor platform. Later the whole thing comes back down mounted to the chassis pallet, and heads to the next phase, chassis assembly.